basically with screen printing, this is um, this ink will dye fabric and net pillow fibers too, including your hair, so you need to be careful about that. The folks at Growing American Youth, a space where lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning young people can be themselves and find support, are screen printing shirts for their march in the upcoming Pride Fest. And one person helps to make sure that shirts easily get picked up and run over here so they don't actually have to leave the station. Here, these kids, 21 and under, connect with other young people in hopes of breaking isolation and building community. Scott Emanuel is the lead advisor for Growing American Youth. Well, there are a lot of people that um, sometimes are surprised that uh, young people at young ages can understand and, and uh, process what sexual orientation and gender identity means. And uh, many of them, when they're in a space where they can do just that, they can excel and do um, extraordinary things. We see young people in all of their um, awesomeness and all of their brokenness. Queer youth. Uh, they have a much higher rate of suicide and just mental like disparities because they don't always find like the support that they need or they don't find like friends or like anyone to talk to and people that are isolated are more likely to harm themselves or just disconnect from everyone and not have a place, their place in the world. Growing American youth strives to meet their needs but they can't do it alone. Because some of the, some of the work that we deal with, um, some of the issues are, are deeper. Um, and so um, we have ongoing support for young people, but when it comes down to it, mental health professionals, they're it for us. We really depend on them a lot. So we have to know who to send to, so we do our research, but then who's out there also has to make, it, make, make things very obvious for us that they're welcoming. According to the Missouri Foundation for Health's LGBT Health Equity Report, Fewer than 15 primary care physicians in the state have registered as LGBT affirming in the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association's online provider network, as well as only six behavioral health providers and two alternative medicine providers. They're vulnerable um, in terms of how they're accepted by their peers and, and especially within their family. Um, so people Dr. Daryl Hudson is a professor at the George Warren Brown School of Social Work at Washington University. Could potentially develop a mental health problem, um, depression, anxiety, um, that can linger into adulthood. Dr. Hudson points out that a lack of medical access for the LGBT community is a cross-generational issue. Um, people who are not covered, for instance, under their partner's health insurance, um, certainly can be a, a factor for how, what type of access, health, healthcare access that individuals have. You gotta perform for this. Okay. Okay. Sit. Sit. No one is more familiar with this issue than Arlene Zaremka and Sulema Tang Martinez, a professor at the University of Missouri-St. Louis since 1978. Sulema was on the front lines pushing to include sexual orientation on the university's anti-discrimination policy. That battle was won in 2003. And then after that, we began advocating, pushing for domestic partner benefits. <laughs> Sulema and Arlene celebrated 30 years together this past February, and they say the cost of their health insurance inequity has been high. We lost collectively tens of thousands of dollars, literally, because my health insurance premiums were so much higher because I was at a small group plan, and my deductible is so much higher than what I would have been if I had been able to be on, on her plan as her sp spouse or domestic partner, uh, we would have more money for retirement in the bank. And so essentially what you had was a two-tier system where those employees who were legally married were getting greater compensation, significantly greater compensation, than were employees who were in a committed partner relationship but who were not legally married. And again, the you know, regardless of whether those partnerships were um, same sex or opposite sex. One week ago, the University of Missouri Board of Curators voted unanimously to include the one plus one plan, allowing any employee eligible for benefits the right to include their domestic partner on their health plan. And while it is a victory worth celebrating, Sulema and Arlene's battle isn't over. Sulema is now retired from full-time teaching.
certainly people retiring in the future, it is very clear that they will be included and that their partners will get benefits. What happens in situations like ours, where I am officially retired, and I repeatedly tried to get her benefits and we were turned down by the university repeatedly, um, I'm, we, we don't know. So that's something that remains open and uh, we're trying to get that clarified. And the story continues from one generation to the next. So these young people, um, LGBTQ young people, um, are often deemed as only in need, only needing our support. And they need our support, no question. Uh, but I think what happens though is that we don't see them as viable community members right now, right here, as much as, as anyone else is.